With a population of roughly 600,000, the city of Vilnius is quite small when compared to most other major European cities. The small size of the city's airport matches the size of the Lithuanian capital. But if you've never traveled through this facility, this video will walk you through the main parts of the terminal and offer some tips and advice for your future trip to this airport. Oh, and if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out the video on getting to and from the Vilnius airport if you don't yet have a transportation plan for your future trip. The first half of this video will look at what to expect when departing the airport. Later in the video, we'll go through the arrivals process. A roughly 10 to 15 minute drive from the city center, Vilnius Airport's main passenger operations take place in two buildings. The building that you see as you drive towards the airport is actually the arrivals hall of Vilnius Airport. If you take the bus, you'll be dropped off in front of this building and you'll need to go inside and up a level to get to the departures hall. If you're traveling by car or taxi, then you might be dropped off in front of the departures hall, since there's a back ramp that allows cars to deliver passengers to this building. It's an interesting setup, but it works for such a small airport. So, once you're in the departures hall, you'll need to find the check-in desk of your airline. For some airlines, the same check-in desks seem to always be used. For example, I know that Lufthansa's check-in desks are located towards the back of the hall, while Air Baltic seems to always be situated at the front and on the left. It's a small hall, and it can easily get crowded during peak travel times when everyone is waiting to have their baggage checked in. Depending on your travel style, you might not actually need to line up to check in. If you don't have any bags to check, then you can get your boarding pass online and head straight through to the security screening area. This is straight ahead and impossible to miss. To get to security, just scan the barcode or QR code of your boarding pass and continue ahead. The middle area of security screening can get pretty congested, but definitely look left and right to see if there are shorter lineups at other security screening checkpoints. You'd be surprised at how few people bother to look. Fortunately, people aren't allowed to take photos or video in the security screening area, so I won't have anything to show you. I can tell you, however, that even at busy times, the lineups tend to move fairly well. However, if you're in a real hurry, you can think about paying 5 euros to get yourself through the fast track security screening. This might definitely be worth it at busier times of the year. After security, you'll pass through one big duty-free store area, something that is pretty common with many airports around the world. Here you can buy the usual duty-free items, sweets, fragrances, and alcohol, among other things. If this isn't something you care about, just look up at the big signs to see which direction to go for your gate, which could be turning right or turning left. Flights that go outside the Schengen area are on the right, at gates B9 to B13. This is a separate part of the airport and you'll need to go through border control and passport check before getting on the plane. In the airport, there are a handful of bars, cafes and restaurants, and of course, more duty-free stores.
While you're waiting, the airport does offer completely free high-speed wireless internet, which is perfect for getting work done. There's also a lounge for business class passengers and frequent flyers. This is called the Narbutas Business Lounge, and if you're neither a business class passenger or frequent flyer, you can just pay to get in. At the time of making this video, it will cost you just 25 euros if you book and pay online ahead of time or 29 euros if you show up to the lounge and pay in person. The Narbutas Business Lounge, like most airport lounges, are quiet places to escape the chaos of the rest of the terminal and boarding gates. This lounge offers pre-packaged sandwiches and salads, as well as various pastries and other snacks. There's a small selection of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages as well. Like any good airport, there are toilets located throughout the terminal as well as drinking fountains located outside the washrooms so you can fill your water bottles before flying. If you're flying with a budget airline like Ryanair or Wizz Air, you will most likely have your boarding pass scanned and then be directed down some stairs where you will wait for a shuttle bus to take you to the plane. This can even happen with airlines like Air Baltic, Finnair, LOT, and SAS. Other full-service airlines tend to board directly onto the aircraft using jet bridges. However, depending on the airport operations, this may not always be the case. It can get pretty crowded when it's time for boarding, so you might want to think about staying seated and waiting until lineups get shorter. This is especially the case when it comes to airlines like Ryanair, since everyone might end up waiting downstairs for a bus at the same time anyways.
So now, let's cover arrival flights. You might arrive, get off the plane using stairs, and be shuttled to the airport terminal. If this is the case, you'll likely be dropped off at an area that leads directly to baggage claim. However, if you get off using a jet bridge, then you'll end up back in the arrivals area of the airport. If this happens, just follow the signs for arrivals and baggage to make your way out. If your flight is coming from outside the Schengen area, like London, then expect to first go through passport control before getting your luggage. The baggage claim area is quite small. Nonetheless, there are two exits. So if you're expecting to meet someone on the outside, make sure you let them know whether you're going to waiting hall A, the one with the big chandelier, or waiting hall C, the one that's a little off to the side. If you don't know, don't worry. It's just about 30 seconds of walking from one place to the other. Once you get your bags, you can walk out of the main exit doors in just a few seconds. If you're new to the city, you might want to stop by the tourist information office to get some advice. You could also stop by the Narvison convenience store between waiting halls A and B to get a SIM card and a bus card. These are pretty easy to purchase, but if you need extra advice, be sure to check out my videos on the Vilnius public transportation system and how to get a SIM card. But that's really all there is to the Vilnius airport. It's small and easy to pass through for most flights. If you got your boarding pass online and don't have any baggage to check, then you can definitely get from the entrance to your gate in 5 minutes on quiet days. Of course, if you need to check your baggage and need to have your passport checked on your way to the UK or elsewhere, then you should definitely give yourself some extra time. So if this video was at all helpful to you, I'd love to know. Share your opinion by leaving a comment down below. Good luck, safe travels, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.